Hello, welcome to episode 43 of live.co.uk. Uh, we're continuing the series on turtle graphics, um, but this week we're making a, a racing game so that you can enter in the names of um, as many different players as you'd like. So let's say player A, player B, player C, and you keep going until you leave this box empty. And it will display the names of the turtles and they'll set off in a race to see who gets to the finish line first. Um, and here, turtle C has won. Um, so we're going to structure this with some procedures and functions. It's live coding, so you'll hopefully get an insight into the thought processes that go on as we put the code together, rather than just seeing the whole finished item. Um, but we want to use turtle graphics. It's called turtle graphics um, because you used to be able to get robots that you could program that move along the floor, and you stick a pen to it, and it will draw a line as it moves. So we want to um, simulate that in Python. We just import the turtle module, and that gives us a canvas that we can use to draw. Okay, um, so I would like, first of all, to um, be able to get all of the player names so that the user can type in as many names as they like, uh, and those will be the players taking part in our race. Python doesn't know how to get player names, so we need to define that function. So let's do that, get player names. Um, this is how we do that. So first, we'll just display a little main menu, so player names. Um, and maybe underline it with some equals. Is. There we go. So now Python knows how to get player names by doing this, but that doesn't actually ask the user a question yet. So let's ask the question, um, please enter a player name or leave blank when you're done. Um, so we'd like to keep asking as many times as the user types things in. So we'll put that in a loop. We'll say while true, keep doing this forever and ever and ever until the name, that's the answer to the question, whatever the user types in. Um, so if that name is equal to an empty string, so if it's left blank, then we can return, we can break out of this function here. But when we do get out, we need to return all of the names that the user's typed in. So we should probably remember them. I'm going to call it a list called names, plural, more than one name. Um, and it's going to be, to begin with, an empty list. But as we type one in, we want to add them into that list. Um, so let's see, names.append, that will add it to the list. And we'll add the single name, the one that the user typed in into that list of names so we can keep track of them. And then when we type in an empty name, that list of names can be sent back out of this function. So that means that hopefully if we send out the return value from here, we can store it in a, another list called player names. Um, and then we'll display it. Let's just have print player names. Here we go. So if we type in A, B, and C, and then leave it blank, that A, B, and C all get stored in this list called names. They get returned as the return value from this function stored in here, and that's what we can see on screen just here. Okay, so we've asked the player names. Next, I would like to be able to create some turtles. Uh, so these are the turtles that are gonna race, and we need to know what all the turtles are named. So we'll send that list of player names into this next function. The output from that function is going to be a list of turtles. And those are the turtles that are going to do the race. But um, our program doesn't know how to create the turtles until we tell it how to. So let's define that function. OK, so def, what do we call it? Create turtles. This time, the function needs some input data. It needs a parameter. So I'm going to call it um, names. It doesn't have to be the same that we've got here. Often, if you do an Edexcel GCC computer science, you'll see it named something like that, P for parameter, and then names. I don't really like doing it that way, but um, that's how you see it in the exam, so that's what I'll put in this video. Okay, so I want to loop through each name of the players and create a turtle for that name. So I'll use a for loop, I in range. Um, so the length of the range that we'll loop through will be the same length as the number of names that we've got, as in A, B, and C will be three names. 
And then we want to make a new turtle. So I'll call it T for now. So we go inside the turtle module, make a new turtle object, and then add it to a list. Let's make a list so we can add it. List of turtles is an empty list to begin with. And then we can say turtles.append will add our newly made turtle to that list. So we should have um, a turtle that's been added, but I'd quite like to be able to display the turtle's name. So if we use t.write and then p names i, that should then display the turtle's name. If we have more than one player, so at the moment it displays all of the names and all of the turtles in the same place. So that's a bit of a problem. To get around that, we'll keep track of where we are in terms of x and y coordinates. So we'll start at y equals zero. And every time we have a new turtle, let's just increase that y coordinate by going up by 50 pixels each time. Um, and then we need to make sure we move to that position. So uh, t dot go to. Um, the x coordinate could be minus 100, so that's a bit to the left of the middle. The y coordinate can be this variable here, so it changes for each turtle. So it's going to get better. We can have multiple turtles and they'll appear in different places, but um, you can see we go from the origin and we go to the right starting point by drawing a line, and I don't want that to happen. So let's lift up the turtle, we'll lift up the pen. Um, and then we'll put the pen back down again. So pen up and pen down either side of moving means that this time we just glide to the right place rather than drawing to the right place. OK, so we've made our turtles. We've added them to a list. The only thing we haven't done yet is returning that list so that we can use them from a different part of the program. Uh, here we go. Let's return. Oops, can't spell turtles. Um, and then we've stored them here. Next, I'd like to be able to race. And in order to race, we need that list of turtles. And I want to find out which one is one. Um, and I don't need to display the names any help. I don't need to display the names anymore. There we go. So I need to tell Python how to race. So let's do that just like we did before. We make our own function. We'll define it and we'll say the name is race. It needs a list of turtles. Um, and then similarly, like we had before, we'll have a loop like this um, for i in range. But this time, we'll find out how many turtles we've got and repeat that many times. So how do we race? Well, to race, we just need to move a turtle forwards by a certain amount. Um, now, I'd like that amount to be random. Uh, so we'll import the random module at the start of the program. That means that we can then do random.randint to choose a random number between maybe one pixel and 10 pixels. But instead of moving a turtle called T, we're going to access one from our list of turtles. So we've got a list of turtles. And then the first turtle in the list is going to be zero. The second one is going to be one. But we're using a for loop with i, so we can put i in here and loop through and move all of our turtles along randomly in turn. Now this won't be particularly exciting yet, it'll just move ever so slightly forwards a little bit, a random amount. I like to keep doing that until one of them crosses the finish line. Okay, so let's think logically, what does that mean? Um, while true, so it goes on forever and ever and ever. Um, uh, and then if the turtle we're currently moving, if its position is greater than, let's say, 100, it started with x is minus 100, and it's going to stop when x gets to positive 100. But this pos here is going to get two coordinates. It's going to get x and y. We need to say that we're interested in the first coordinate, the x coordinate, and it's only when that increases over 100 that we can stop. And when we stop, We'll return, we'll break out of the for loop, and we'll break out of the while loop, and we'll break out of this function. But I'd like to return the number of the turtle that's just won the race. And then we can say um, something like congratulations to, uh, and then the name of the player that's just won. Player names, that's our list with all of the player names. 
And then the position within the list of player names is the winner, the return value from race. Let's have a look and see if it works. Let's do player one, player two, player three. We make all of the turtles. They race off randomly. Um, looks like player one has won. And it says congratulations to player one. So there are a couple of challenges that you can work through. Um, let's have a look. Um, challenge one is to draw a finish line um, where x is 100. So that means um, you need to draw it from where x is 100 and y is 0 to where x is 100 and y is, I don't know, like 100. And then the first turtle to cross that line will be counted as the winner. Um, next challenge, you can make your turtles random colours. Um, make each turtle a different random colour. So you could choose a colour from a random list. Um, and then finally, you can draw different lanes um, for each turtle to draw uh, to race in. So imagine you've got, say, two turtles. You might want to draw lines in different colours, maybe a green background and a blue sky or something like that, so you can see the turtles racing off into the distance. So just a reminder that you can find um, links in the description to this video um, or on live.thecode.uk um, to some free interactive challenges. Um, otherwise, I will see you next week. All the best. Bye-bye.